So we've still got our uh, secure shell session opened up. Uh, on the Pi, we've ran the update and upgrade commands. Uh, everything's been done. I'm going to go ahead and reboot the Pi. If I can get focus here, there it is. Reboot the Pi, which means we'll lose our shell. Oh, uh, sudo super user do reboot. Yes, you're watching me stumble. Session stops, so that, that broke the, this shell while it reboots the machine. We'll have to reconnect, and we'll let the uh, Pi here restart, and we'll give it a second to do that. Uh, SimH, which is used here to, to run the PDP-11 emulation, you'll find it on the SimHTrailingEdge.com website. This is the official website for it. We don't need to download the software here. Uh, we can actually just... Get, uh, using the git command on the Raspberry Pi actually install the software directly uh, in the shell. There's a lot of good information up here. Uh, there's some really cool things uh, here. You know, machine emulations and things that you just never think of. Uh, could be a lot of fun to play with. So I just wanted to mention that. So let's see if we can get connected back to the Pi. Let's reopen a session. back in. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up just so you can see it a little better. Let's go back to the Word doc. And we're going to follow the instructions here. So we're going to do a... I'll just copy and paste these. We're going to do this super user do. We're going to create a subdirectory called under opt PIDP11. Folders created. We're going to make that our default folder. And you can see here our folder portion here got updated, so we're in that working subfolder. We're going to use uh, sudo, the wget command, to go out here and download the PIDP11 distribution we want. This distribution's got the uh, uh, demons and things in it that are required to make the blinking lights work on the PIDP11 front panel. So it's just easier to get it from here. So let's go ahead. Oh, I didn't get the whole command. Let's go ahead and get the whole thing. So super user do, wget, go to that website, download this software. You can see it downloading the uh, tar.gz file here. So it's a... Uh, uh, Tar style update wrapped in a gzip or zip style uh, compression, really common. We'll let this do its thing. Hopefully, it'll finish up here in a re reasonable amount of time. I see it kind of stalling here. I don't honestly know what this. In this case, if it's using the wired connection on the Pi to my network or if it's actually working over Wi-Fi. Not that here at home it should make much difference. I uh, don't know why that stalled. It's not that big a download. It's only 3.4 megabytes. This shouldn't be halted here. We'll give it a second. And if we have to, we'll kill it and try again. I don't know why that is stalled. I'm going to go ahead and try again. We just may have lost our connection. Hopefully it'll get past the 39% this time. Yeah, for whatever reason, we lost the connection on the download. W or Control-C killed the previous session. Uh, we just got a clean download. We're now going to use the tar utility to uncompress that gzip file. So if we copy this command line, we're doing again a super user do, so it's with elevated permissions. Tar is the, uh, I think it's tarbell archive. It's the archive dearchive utility. Uh, XVF is basically going to uncompress it. Uh, here are all the files. Uh, I think it's going to create subfolders and we're going to pass it the uh, gzip file we just downloaded. Unexpected end of file 
error is not recovering. We got a bad gzip. Maybe we do. Let's see what we got here. Uh, ah, so here's the one that got partially downloaded. D. So what happened was we got a partial download and then I got a complete download with the dot one extension. So I'm going to delete the partially downloaded one. Uh, RM. Yes, I want to remove that file. Permission. Oh, geez. It should now be gone. Is it RM to rename? Rename. Okay, it is. Rename uh, PI to PI. We'll take the one off. Okay, I'm completely confused here. Don't know why I can't rename that. Uh, there's something obviously I'm doing here at the command shell that's wrong. But we should be able to just go ahead and do the full file name. Oh, no, it's not remove. We want to do sudo tar. I don't know if we can do the dot one there or not. There it is. Okay, so you saw me struggle there. Uh, fail download, partial file, redownload, added a dot one on the file. I went ahead and used tar to unzip that file. So we got a clean uh, run tar uh, without issue. Now let's go ahead and we want to go ahead and install the PIDP11 software and that's what this command here is going to do. Is again with elevated permissions it's going to run that shell script. And This is pulling down various pieces from the internet it needs. Uh, it's going to install a ton of additional packages here. I see X11 in here. Uh, all kinds of things, but we'll let it go ahead and download all those. Which is what it's doing now. It's pulling down all those pieces that it needs uh, to build the full environment for this to run inside of. With lots of libraries and things involved for the uh, emulator. Hopefully this will run to completion. of additional content being added on the Pi, which is fine. Well, this is apparently needed. Just let it keep cranking here. You see I'm seeing bits of X11, which is the Unix windowing system. It's kind of the, well, it is. It's it's provides window a uh, windowing capability on top of the the Unix OS. So yeah, we want to continue with this piece. Now my first attempt at this, I had this fail when I built the original image out and never knew why. And then rerunning the installer completed. Uh, I think it came down to one of the download files either being corrupted or just not getting connected and downloading it. So, you know, keep an eye on it. Make sure all the pieces come down and get installed. Excellent. We've been able to get everything down and we can go ahead and reboot the system. Same thing we did before. Do a reboot. Our session will get kicked. Which is fine. We'll give the Pi a second here to reboot. 
We still need to download the operating systems. That's what this section here entails. Uh, then there'll be other sections here we're going to want to move through. Let's see if I can get a fresh session. Now oh, the machine's still booting. So we got connected directly to, in this case, so what's happened here is we've installed the PIDP11 software. Uh, when the Pi rebooted, it started up the SimH daemons that are the SimH emulator, and that emulator is running, but it hasn't booted an OS. So what happens is when I grab the shell here, uh, we got connected directly to that, that, that service that's running there on the machine. Uh, I don't know if we'll need to exit out of here. Let's see if I can get... No, we just grab that same session back. Let's see if we can uh, get a new shell session started here. Oh, what? Sessions... It's just going to take over the same session run. No, it's not. Okay. I don't know if this is... I suspect this is going to get us back to the same place we just were. Where we're going to be looking at. It is, I believe, Control-E here gets us... Simulation stopped. I can exit the simulation and get back to the Raspberry Pi command line. And that's where I wanted to be. So because we were connecting to the default terminal on the Pi, we got directly connected to the SimH emulator. Control E, stop the emulator, and then exit, exit the emulator and got us back to the Raspberry Pi command line. We wanted to do this because we want to go ahead and then now download some operating systems. So we want to go back to that PIDP11 folder. We're going to go ahead and get the larger collection of operating system. Oops. Did not copy. Oh, it copied multiple lines. That's why it was bugging me. It's saying you're going to do two things at once. Do you really want to do that? Go ahead and let it pull those down. This actually took a while. Yeah, this has got a 17 minute estimated runtime. So we'll again uh, pause recording here, and when this gets done, we'll come back. Thank <laughs> you.